Well, yes, indeed, he's here, and uh, thank you for coming on this morning. Uh, well, uh, looking at some of the actions, again, of the Senate, because uh, they have deferred for two weeks the confirmation of the 27 resident electoral commissioners sent to them. Uh, and then we know that INEC did budget uh, the proposed 45 billion uh, for 2017 uh, this year in terms of the activities. But, you know, there are those who say, look, it's, it's a widely said uh, mantra now, time is money and time is spent. Do you think, having looked into the cost of elections, this will have any implications whatsoever on how elections happen moving forward? Uh, yes, it, it will. It's um, what today is called the parable of the lost card. And that's what is happening between the executive and the, the Senate. What is the parable of the, the lost card? It's... Like the game of cards, um, over eight decades ago, this game of what started. So what we are seeing today is a lot of political games. From the Senate, it does seem that they have their own cards close to their chest. So we've seen them play all sorts of moves. We've seen stalling of the budgets. We've seen them ensuring that they keep their members happy and united. And more recently, we've seen the last card which is the non confirmation of the of the Rex. But in all of the non confirmation of the Rex, there was a popular voice that I talked about perhaps them not confirming the Rex because they were childish. So let's look at and examine the data on if the Senate were indeed childish by not confirming the Rex. So the age distribution of the senators, how many Senators, we've got 108. Um, apart from a number, a number central that is still up in contention, we have five senators that are in their 70s. How many senators do we have that are in their 60s? We've got 39 senators who are in their 60s. How many do we have who are in their 50s? We've got 46. How many senators are in their 40s? We've got only 18. Here's what this narrative means. Approximately 80% of the senators are between the age of 50 and in their 60s. So based on that, you will say perhaps the senators are not childish. But is that the only way to determine if they are childish or not? No, that isn't. The other way to look at it is to look at how many senators have that experience. How many of them have been in the 6th, 7th, and eight assembly. Only 13. Only about 13% of the senators have consecutively been in three assemblies. So if you like to use age, you perhaps will say the senators are not childish. However, if you like to use experience, the experience shows that perhaps indeed, yes, the senators could be said to be to be, to be childish. But why was all of this um, political drama happening? Three things. Let's look at how far are we from elections. So in 2019, the elections will be in February. So that simply means that 2019, it is no governance. 2019, no governance. Let's look at 2018. Well, we can't look at 2018 without looking at all the other penultimate years to the election, 2002, 2006, 2010, and 2014. There are only three things that are consistent when you look at those penultimate years to the election. What are these three things? The first is it's the year of political conventions. The second is you'll often find within all these previous penultimate years to the election, it is also the year of ethnic segregation. And lastly, it's the year of zonal manipulations. So in essence, 2018 is weak governance. How did you come mm. to... Okay, I'm just wondering how you arrived at all of those zonal there, there are consistent patterns that you find Who's out. Who's manipulating who? A lot of inter-party manipulations. A lot of inter-party manipulations. So in reality, what is left for real governance is the last nine months of this year. And indeed, 
for any woman that wants to still have a child this year, the action needs to start now. So what is happening between the Senate and the non-confirmation of the Rex and the Executive does indeed make a lot of political sense, even okay. if it doesn't make All right. social uh, We need to go on break. Social uh, sense. Unique figures you're, you're, you're bringing in today, but um, we'll be back in a moment. Join us again. Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, uh, Jide is uh, giving us his con going to give us his concluding thoughts. So uh, I was trying to gather myself and uh, understand your uh, trajectory. But go ahead and tell us about, speak to us about figures now. Uh, you were going to conclude on whether or not it has any implication whatsoever on the elections. So just consider this. Um, the most um, recent information we have is that the last election, the ballot boxes cost five billion now. And that information is from INEC. They've also said, five billion, five billion now. They've also said that the ballot papers cost eight billion naira. But can we look at the cost without looking at the reward? We need to look at the reward, and the reward is the sort of people that we elect into offices. And so how do we elect people? They've said to be president, the maximum spending a president can use for the campaign is one billion naira. One billion naira, even though we have evidence to suggest that the campaign goes above one billion naira. However, Within a four-year period, the maximum salary of the president is only 56 million naira. So in essence, the president must be a bad businessman for him to want to invest one billion naira in campaign funds and get an annual salary of only 56 million naira. So that's often where the problem starts, a mismatch between how much you spend for campaign and how much salary you get. The governor is allowed to spend 200 million naira, a salary for within a four-year period only 31 million naira. The Senate president, campaign funds allowed 40 million naira. His salary, only 35 million naira. So two things. It's either we significantly reduce the amount that they're allowed to spend on campaign and enforce it, or we increase their salaries. Because how easy is it to separate a man's altruistic needs from his business instincts? And so as long as a man has strong business instincts, the amount he spends on campaigning is totally not related to how much he will earn as a salary and income. And so we clearly see a disparity between how much they spend on campaigns and how much they receive. But back to the Rex. Today we've seen a list of 27 nominees that still hasn't been confirmed. Here's what it means. Within those 27 states where we have these nominees, total PVCs uncollected based on the last election was 9.6 million uncollected PVCs, approximately 10 million. We remember that the last election, the margin of difference between President Jonathan Den and President Buhari was only 2.6 million. So clearly, without Rex in place, and we have administrative secretaries, then we need to ensure how do we make sure the integrity of this database isn't compromised without the RECs. Especially we know that the INEC, the body, wants to start continuous voters registration from next month. So what happens to this database, the integrity of the database, without RECs in, in place? And we also know within these 27 states, six regions where we have uncollected PVCs, there are two regions that account for 60% of the PVCs. Potentially these regions are the regions where manipulations could happen the most. 40% of those uncollected PVCs are in the southwest and 20% are in the north central. So clearly there's a need for us to have the RECs confirmed, but there's also a need for us to have due process and the right thing to be done. Okay, so uh, as you started with the action, we'll have to start now, not in two weeks. Well, Jide Ogunso, uh, Channel Savings Data and Info Analyst, thank you for talking to us today. Well, that's what we'll draw the curtains today on the program. And what a week it's been. And we thank you for, uh, of course, letting us be part of it. We'll be back next week. I'm Chamberlain Osa. What a Friday it has been. Stay safe. I'm Gimba Umar. I'm just starting the Friday. <laughs> Be safe. Those are my words, exactly, Gimba. You took them <laughs> right out of my mouth. Thank you so much for watching. Have a splendid weekend. Amount of people.